This video is going to show you the relationship that hypothesis testing has with confidence intervals. Suppose that we're testing the null hypothesis mu equal to mu naught, our hypothesized mean, versus the alternative hypothesis mu naught equal to mu naught, using a 5% level of significance. A 95% confidence interval meant that we were leaving out 5% of the area in total. Since we're leaving out 5% of the area in total for a confidence interval, we're leaving out 2.5% of the area in each tail under the normal distribution. What this means is that a 5% level of significance for a two-sided hypothesis test corresponds to a 95% confidence interval. In a two-sided hypothesis test at the 5% level of significance, we're going to reject the null hypothesis whenever the sample mean is in the upper or the lower 2.5% of the distribution. This is because the area that's more extreme than that sample mean is less than 0.025, so doubling it to get the p-value would give us a p-value less than 0.05. This also means that the sample means are at least 1.96 standard deviations away from the hypothesized mean. This gives us enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Thinking back to the definition of a confidence interval, a confidence interval consists of all reasonable values of a population mean. These are values for which the null hypothesis will not be rejected. So, if the 95% confidence interval contains the value of the hypothesized mean, then the sample mean is reasonably close to the hypothesized mean. The effect of this is that the p-value is going to be greater than 0.05, so we'll fail to reject the null hypothesis. On the other hand, if the 95% confidence interval does not contain the hypothesized mean, then the sample mean that we got from the sampling process is relatively far away from the hypothesized mean. This would give us a p-value of less than 0.05 if we ran the hypothesis test, so we would end up rejecting the null hypothesis. Here's an example of how everything works together. We want to test if the average amount that college students spend on non-essential items each semester differs significantly from $500. A random sample of 36 students gave a sample mean of $482. Assume that the population standard deviation is $50 and that we want to do this test at the 5% level of significance. Since we want to see if there's a significant difference, the null hypothesis is going to be mu equal to 500, and the alternative hypothesis will be mu not equal to 500. Rather than running through the test, since we have a two-sided alternative, we can construct a confidence interval. A 5% level of significance for the hypothesis test corresponds to 95% confidence. Our confidence interval is going to be the sample mean 482, plus and minus 1.96 times the standard deviation, 50, divided by the square root of the sample size, 36. The margin of error is 16.33, so our final confidence interval is 465.67 to 498.33. What we can do now is plot this on the normal distribution to get a visual representation. The interval gets centered at the sample mean 482 and extends out to 465.67 and 498.33. Let's consider the hypothesis test now and figure out how close the sample mean is to the hypothesized mean. 500 lies outside of the confidence interval, meaning it lies outside of reasonable values for the population mean. What this means is that 482 is too far away from 500 for 500 to be a reasonable estimate of the average amount that college students spend on non-essential items each semester. As a result, we'll reject the null hypothesis because the 95% confidence interval does not contain 500, which was our hypothesized mean. Here's what you should take away from this video. A two-sided hypothesis test is equivalent to calculating its corresponding confidence interval and identifying if the interval contains the hypothesized mean. You should fail to reject the null hypothesis if the interval does contain the hypothesized mean, and reject the null hypothesis if the interval does not contain the hypothesized mean. 
However, this method only works for two-sided hypothesis tests. Confidence intervals cannot be used to make decisions about one-sided hypothesis tests.